Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Wayne County Chambers podcast for the record. We want to say a special thank you to our sponsors, Sport Durst of Goldsboro, Goldsboro Builder Supply, and Professional Data Management. The Sport Durst team is ready to get you into a beautiful new Volkswagen, offering open and honest pricing on every vehicle and service. Sport Durst of Goldsboro understands the value of your time and dollars. Providing quality building materials since 1953, Goldsboro Builder Supply is your premier destination for custom designs and excellent service to builders and contractors in Wayne County and surrounding areas. Professional data management offers specialized service and technologies designed to help you gain maximum reimbursements for the valuable services that your office provides. Another huge thank you to our in-kind sponsors, Daniels Furniture, University Lights of Goldsboro, and Johnson Carpet One, who together worked hard to make our beautiful podcast set what you see today. And for the record, we're glad you're here. All right. How are you? Good. good. Everybody's good. You great. guys look so great. Um, you're some of my favorite people in the world because uh, you work with our library, the Wayne County Public Library. But I want you to introduce yourself so people can get to know you and just tell us a little bit, tell us your name, a little bit about who you are, your role, and uh, and then how you maybe got into working for the library. Sure. I'll go ahead and start. Um, Well, Scott, you know me, Mm -hmm. but for everyone else, I'm Donna Phillips. I'm the director of Wayne County Public Library. I'm in my 28th year being Mm. at the library now, one of my very favorite places. You started about 14 years old. Yeah, I'm somewhere around that that time, right? Um, And how I got um, involved in libraries started, well, my passion started over on Chestnut Street and the Gertrude Will House, where that was the public library when I was a young girl growing up in Goldsmith. And I still remember the sound of the creek and the hardwood floors there and all the books and the magic that uh, that place held. But um, I fell into libraries. There's a story about this. Um, No pun intended. (laughs) Um, I started out as a um, teacher elementary education, early childhood education, actually, um, taught for a while. Was that here in Wayne County? Yes. And then had an opportunity to um, go to work for our wonderful uh, community action agency, Wages, as the education coordinator for the Head Start program. And while I was there, um, I had wonderful training opportunities to learn about literacy, adult literacy, family literacy. And I became really intrigued with how um, a parent's literacy level um, would impact their child's future success with reading in school. And so about that time, lo and behold, there was a position open in the children's department as a children's librarian. I applied and the rest is history. There you are. You've been there. And so 28 years ago, that was. Um, Yes, a magic thing. I still recall when they gave me the keys to the library and, um, you know, I had the key to the kingdom and I have felt that way ever since. Wow. That's great. So I'm Megan Wilson. I'm the assistant director and I've been with the library for about 17 years. We don't do math in the library, so we're going to go give or take on that. Um, but, My kind of place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm a native of New Bern, actually. So my dad growing up always took us to the library. That was very important to him. Um, but like Donna, that wasn't something that I've always thought, oh, I should be a librarian. Um, I was pre-law in college and so really wanted to serve my community, make a difference um, that had been set that example had been set by my grandfather. Um, and just at some point in time, I worked at the library at Carolina when I was there. And I just kind of fell into it and love it and love the ability to serve the public um, and really leave this world better than I found it. Yeah. Wow. Cool. <laughs> So my name's Anna Snyder. I'm the head of reference and I've been at the library since 2015. So however long that is, you know, we don't do math. Um, But I grew up in Goldsboro and I grew up going to the Goldsboro library and the one in Pikeville and just always loved being in a library, but never considered it as a career. Um, I think everybody that has an interest in literature or history thinks, oh, I should be a teacher or I should be a lawyer. Um, And I've thought about both of those things. Um, I just really like being a student. And so like figuring out what came next was really hard for me. Um, But when I was in college, 
our campus had a lot of libraries and I spent a lot of time in them. Um, in my senior year, I did a semester long project actually on the history of Goldsboro, which was kind of cool. Um, and we had to do a lot of archival research. And so I spent a lot of time in the special collections library, which is one of the most beautiful places in North Carolina, if not America. Um, and I was like, I, n I never want to leave this place because it's so beautiful and like the resources are incredible and they really value learning and serving the people of North Carolina. And so I was like, this may be something I should consider. And so I had this goal. I was going to be an academic librarian is what I wanted to do. Um, didn't want to come back to Goldsboro. Didn't want to work in a public library. I had a very specific vision. Um, so I went to library school. Um, and when I graduated, guess what library was not hiring? That one. Guess one. <laughs> which one was? The Wayne County <laughs> Public Library. So I came and my first job was in the children's department. And I fell in love with it. Um you know, on a college campus, you're really kind of insulated from the wider community. And so the people you impact is kind of smaller, smaller community. But in a public library, they impact everyone. And what better job than to work for your hometown, um, your neighbors, and just get to do such a wide variety of things. So it's, it's the perfect job. That's awesome. And I, you know, I think uh, growing up, when we got to go to the library. So you stuff was part of your, well, at least when, when I was going to school, uh, maybe it still is, I don't know, but you got to go to the library uh, and especially during the, the, the book week, mm -hmm. was it called? Book fair. Book book fair. fair. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. The most amazing week <laughs> ever in the history of, you know, childhood. <laughs> if you were at school, you got to go. You were always trying to figure out how you could score some bucks so you could do the thing. And, um, and then book it. You remember book it mm -hmm. where you had the, did they still do that? I think they do it during the summer. Um, I believe yeah. mm -hmm. that's anyway, it was so great. You could, if you got all the five stars on the button, yeah. you got a personal pan pizza. Right. Yes. So we remember pizza's appropriate in city, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but no books are, um, and just, you were talking about archives and, um, I, I remember not the first time I went to college, but the second time I went to college. And I started to care about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, those primary resources, mm -hmm. it's like an adventure. Yes. That you're just, it's like you're transported to a whole different time and place and you're there and you're, you're seeing these things. Sometimes you're feeling the actual, because the texture is like an actual, mm -hmm. like especially even in our local, you're seeing some of the original clips, some of the original writings, the original recordings of these conversations and then you're there you are. So it's history coming alive. That's right. You're actually uh, touching and being a part of history. Yeah. Uh, I got a history degree and um, yeah, I'm not, this is what I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> who knew? But uh, yeah, libraries are, are fun and books are fun and books are changing. I mean, I think maybe before we get deep into the, you know, more about the library, let's talk about just the books in general, because used to, um, People read hardback mm -hmm. things like there were newspapers in people's hands. And there's a, there is a, that's a thing. That's a whole vibe. Right. But it's, it's evolving. It is. Mm -hmm. um, let me talk to you about the um, hard cover book, yeah. right? Okay. Um, and then Anna and Megan can chime in about all the okay. new resources, sure. yeah. the new formats. But um, there will always be people who want to have that paper copy of a book in their hand, myself included. Um, I read books on um, e-readers, obviously, but I prefer the book in my hand. There's just something about the smell of a book, the excitement of a new book coming mm -hmm. out. I recently um, shared that I had just received a book in the mail that I had ordered in it. There's just something about that excitement. It's back to that Scholastic Book Fair feeling, mm -hmm. uh, excitement of a new book coming out. Actually, millennials and Zen Xers are saying that they prefer a uh, paper book, a book to hold in their hands, but there are other formats. We have lots of books at the libraries mm -hmm. in a variety of formats. Yeah. So we not only have like the normal stuff you see on the shelf. So our hardcover paperbacks, magazines, newspapers, DVDs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we also are a member of the NC Cardinal Consortium. And so we share books with libraries across the state. And so if you have a library card, you have access to many, many thousands of things that aren't just on our shelves. And then we have, you know, books in a variety of formats. So we've got 
large print. We have books that can read to you. We've got books in other languages, but we have ebooks, e audiobooks. We have tons of stuff on our website. So, databases, language learning things, um, homework help, business help. Like, we have just so many resources on our website. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just you know, what's on our shelves. Yeah. Well, and books are great and books are certainly a star of the show, but I know that in our conversations before, and I think this is what's so interesting about the conversation we're having today is that, um, well, really, I guess every library maybe, but certainly the Wayne County public library is more than books. Mm -hmm. So when we say it's more than books and you say it's more than books, what does that mean? Like help us understand because most people, they don't know this. Sure. Well, the public library is one of the few remaining third places in a community. So it's a place that all are welcomed. Everybody can come and feel a sense of belonging, feel a sense of community. Um, we say that anyone, no matter your background, can come in our library and um, just you're free to explore um, ideas that you have or new topics or things you're interested in to discover new things and to connect with members of your community. Um, there's so much to do at the library. We really um, craft our um, programming um, around what the needs of our community are and what they tell us they're interested in. Um, so much more than books. Yeah, and I think a lot of people forget about the library when they're thinking about us as an economic engine. Um, we know that with the base, one of the very first stops, we always hear the um, airmen and their families say the first stop they make is the library because that is a consistent throughout wherever they're stationed. They can go to their public library. They can have access to information, access to that resources. Maybe their internet's not set up yet. They can come right on in, get a card, get connected to, um, you know, whatever they need. We do that a lot. We um, help veterans, small business. There's all sorts of things that we do um, that are way more than books. And we have a variety of other things that you can check out as well. So we have puzzles. We have games that circulate. We have blood pressure monitors that circulate. We have a wonderful garden. Um, we have online tutoring. We just have so many things and a really wide variety of programming for all ages. So starting with baby story time all the way up to our senior adults. Um, so I think the, the thing that I want people to know is that really no matter what your interest is or uh, what need you have, we probably have something for that, or we can tell you where to go to find that information. So we are here for all needs for all ages. Yeah, that's so true. And I think, um, I think particularly for like entrepreneurship, um, you know, from the chamber's perspective, what a, um, entrepreneurship is one of the most leveling things that exists. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's like you, you don't have to, have a degree, you can come from any background. And if you have a great idea and you can figure out how to organize that idea into a business, you can change your life. That's right. Right. Which means that the library is an accelerator, an incubator for your potential. And that's very different yeah. way of thinking about the library than just, it's a place my kids go to check out books. Yeah, a few years ago, um, Scott, we actually received a grant that allowed us to um, offer some services for um, budding entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs in our community. And so the grant funds allowed us to buy some things like a shadow box that you do photography box. with, mm -hmm. uh, light box, thank mm -hmm. you, Anna. Um, and um, of course, we have Sean at the library, one of our fine reference librarians who works a lot with um, small businesses and entrepreneurs to just help them find the resources they need. Uh, maybe they're researching details about the community, the markets here, et cetera. Um, but that was a, a, another way that we think outside of the box to try to um, impact our community in a positive way. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, you think um, access, you don't have to be wealthy to have access to those resources. In other words, they are really, when you say for everyone, it's important to recognize and acknowledge that there are those that, um, you know, even getting to the small business center mm -hmm. or to, you know, other, um, the community college or other places that deliver these services, that step might be too big. 
And the library for so many people is like a step in between. It, it can really be a first step for people who are, are, are considering not just, uh, not just, uh, entrepreneurship, but like any path in any direction. And, and so it is a career initiator. It is a, it, it's a, it's a poverty buster. It, it, it is the, uh, ability I think to help people. It's mobility. Mm-hmm. You talked about it as an economic engine and I agree because mobility is what we want for everybody. Right. Yep. And if people are wanting to grow, then go to the library. You want to learn how to cook? Yep. You can go to the library. Mm-hmm. Right? You want to garden? You want to learn how to garden? You can go to the library. Exactly. Yes. Is that right? Exactly. I, exactly. No, I just want to make sure on. I'm on the right yep. I'm, 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 I'm on the right path. Is that yep. true? Yeah. Scott, Absolutely we've invested true. a good amount of time here recently working with opportunity youth in our community. Mm-hmm. And um, so we recognize that there um, are young adults in our community, ages 16 to 24, who are disengaged with school. Maybe they are still occupying a seat, but they are disengaged. Or maybe they've already dropped out of school for whatever reason. And um, we see the potential in those young people. And so we have had the opportunity to participate in um, an initiative of Carolina Cross 100 called Our State, Our Work. Mm -hmm. And the chamber was a part of that collaborative and we're so grateful for that. But um, we are continuing to find ways to um, help these young people find alternative pathways to success. That's really important um, to us. Yeah. So, um, we were the only library in the state to apply to be part of that initiative, which we were really excited about um, because we not only got to learn so much from the people involved in that, um, but we also got to kind of educate people across the state in why libraries are involved in such work and why why we're doing it, you know, because a lot of other people in that project were um situated in like community colleges or workforce boards and things like that. And they're like, why, why would the library be interested? And I was like, well, every day we help people do resumes and apply for jobs and gain tech skills and all of these things. We provide resources they can kind of learn about different programs at the community college or about different industries they may want to go into. So it makes total sense for us to be involved in that work. And so we formed the Wayne County Pathfinders, which the chamber is happily a member of, um, to kind of figure out who the opportunity youth in our community are, what barriers they're facing, and then connect them to resources that can help them on their way. And so our goal was to reach, it was the goal set by Carolina Across 100 um, through this initiative for our county to reach 209 opportunity youth, because that's kind of the estimated 10% of the total number in the county. And through different um, initiatives and programs that the individual members of our group have done and collective programs we've done together, um, we have reached about 70% of that goal so far. We have through um, 2025 to reach um, that goal. So we're about 70% of the way there. So we're thrilled. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do, um, we have monthly programs called Career Glow Ups. We just had one this week. Um, And we do them in a variety of places around the county. So young people can come and take like skills assessments. They can um, be connected with some online resources where they can kind of explore Mm -hmm. careers. We have usually somebody from the community college that can tell them about programs that they have, credential um, credentials that they can get. Um, We do headshots. We do resume help and just kind of have a conversation with them about what's going on in their world and how we can help them on on their path to success. And that those have been very impactful to be a part of. Um, and we're just hoping to grow those and reach more young people as we go along. Sport Durst Volkswagen Mazda of Goldsboro is proud to support Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. Family owned and operated, Sport Durst knows the importance of keeping local money local and supporting the community. We put our customers first with the area's best pricing, best trade in value, and best selection of new and pre owned vehicles. Come experience the Sport Durst difference where customers and community come first. Yeah, so opportunity youth. Let's talk about that in just a second. They how how is that defined? What is what is an opportunity youth? So they are sixteen to twenty four year olds who either aren't in school 
aren't working or both. So a lot of times, like Donna said, they may still be in school, but maybe kind of not getting a lot out of it, um, or they've dropped out, maybe have a job. Um, their job may not provide a living wage. And so what this initiative has done is try to connect them to either educational resources where they can finish their high school degree or get a credential of some sort or help them on their way to find um, a living wage employment. And we know that's kind of, it's a continuum. So not sure. everybody's experience is the same and not everybody will find success in the same way. So it's understanding people where they are and then figuring out where they want to go. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And I think if you pull back from like a macro, there, it's the whole workforce issue. So if the state at the state level, they realized, okay, this is number one state for business in for the last two years, CNBC says so. It's got to be true. <laughs> so we're the number one state for business, but our talent pipelines, there's huge deficits across every sector. And I mean, the data is pretty stark. Well, one pathway, like if you're trying to be creative and explore all pathways, one of the pathways to try to get a, a strong workforce and get mobility among that workforce would be, in this case, Opportunity Youth, which is exacerbated, has been exacerbated, as I understand it, COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah. like COVID took a problem and it just blew a great big hole in it and it grew tremendously. Mm -hmm. So even being able to know where those folks are, like how to identify where they are so they're not just lost in space and then right. gravitating we, them. We've heard stories, um, Scott, um, about youth, who opportunity youth, who um, during the pandemic um, went to work to help support their families. And that income became a part of that family's income. And so when school went back in session, the family couldn't afford for that income to be lost. So those folks are still working. So part of what we want to do is to make sure um, to first honor their contribution to their family, but to then also let them know there's still a way for you to be successful mm -hmm. academically, and we're going to help you find that way. It may not be the traditional way. It may be something like Excel Academy. Megan, you want to tell, yeah, sure. tell them about that? So Excel Academy is this great partnership we have. Um, there are actually several libraries across the state doing it through the State Library of North Carolina, and it is an alternative pathway for um, people to get their high school diploma. So it's not a GED program. It's a high school diploma program. Um, they can, it's completely online. They have to pass an assessment to make sure that they have the skills needed, which the library can also help with, and this department will help with that. Um, if somebody didn't have those tech skills or the devices or anything like that, we would be able to assist with that. And then in many cases, they're able to get a scholarship. Um, and actually, last week, we had our first graduation. So do you mm -hmm. want to tell them about the graduation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, initially, the State Library had about 30 scholarships to give out. And Wayne County was one of the counties they piloted this in, um, which we were thrilled because... It's because Wayne County Public <laughs> Library is awesome. Yes. Sorry, I continue. I mean, really, it is. Um, and so... Throughout this process, they have been so complimentary at the State Library because we have had the most students apply to be part of this program. Um, I think we have like 12 to 15 students in the county um, that have been awarded scholarships. And so this program... Um, most students, you have two years to complete it because you can transfer in a lot of credits, but we've had our first three graduates finish already. And so we hosted a graduation for them, which was incredible. Yeah. They, the um, state library brought caps and gowns and nice. they got their diploma and we had cake and just really made them feel special because it is such a milestone in their life. And mm. their families came and we took their pictures and had headshots done and mm -hmm. gave them a lot of just encouragement. Um, so we are here for you, whatever your next step is. And we're so proud that you've accomplished this. So it's really cool to be part of that. Yeah, that is outstanding. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Oh my goodness. And I think too, like I think about, um, you know, I wonder, I'm sure this is in Spanish maybe, mm -hmm. but because mm -hmm. the statistics on Hispanic males mm -hmm. finishing mm -hmm. high school in Wayne County is poor. Mm -hmm. As you might expect, for a lot of different reasons, I won't go into all those reasons today, but um, it's one of the most underperforming demographics. Mm -hmm. 
those folks are working. They're just working at a, at a wage that's considerably lower than they otherwise could be working at if they were to finish, mm-hmm. you know, and then get certification. And maybe at a family need, they are, they're just, they're just pulling out. You know, they, they may take one, uh, what is it? CTE course, you know, instead of three or four that get them up and ready. And I mean, cause a, a kid right now could, if, if they, are connected to the community college system in the trades with CTE, you know, they can, they can finish high school really at 10th grade, go through the community college, get a, get an associate's degree, also get a certification, an apprenticeship, and they come out making Mm -hmm. much better money, you know, $65,000 and above in these, in these skilled trade areas. And they have the skills Mm -hmm. They don't have the knowledge of what the potential is, right? And the next steps to take, which is why we're so excited about this project and the community collaborative, um, because, you know, if you don't, you don't know what you don't know, right? right? And so we see this as a direct conduit to our fabulous community college here in Wayne County and those apprenticeship programs. Um, Just because traditional graduating from high school, going on to a four-year college or university doesn't work for you, it does not mean you cannot be successful. And in fact, you, as you uh, alluded to, yeah. can have a very uh, secure future, especially in Wayne County. Yes, like you could, you can be in this county. You can have grown up in this county or lived in this county for a long time, and you can succeed without a four year degree. I'm not discouraging four year degrees. I'm just saying, without a four year degree, mm-hmm. you can you can have real serious mobility. Right. And so I love the fact that what you're doing is is just getting people to that knowledge, right? Any, any portion of people, any percentage of people that we can get to that knowledge is so beneficial because I mean, it's, it changes their future, right? And when they succeed, we all succeed. That's exactly right. Um, so I want to talk about, um, this idea, you know, statistics, um, demonstrate allegedly statistics demonstrate, you guys can educate us on this, um, that when children are out of school for the summer, um, they slide, they, their, their learning dips, it slips, whatever word you want to use, there's regression that is occurring because kids are away from the resources, away from the regular attention of teachers and the accountability, perhaps where some families are not in a position to deliver that kind of oversight, that kind of mentoring. They don't have the resources for tutoring, you know, and so kids are just doing what I did when I grew up, which was go play. Right. There's nothing wrong with play. We love play. Children learn through play. We love play. But there's so much more. That's right. At your library and other places in our community. So first, educate us on the learning loss part. Like what is happening there? I, I don't fully understand the problem, so maybe help me understand the problem. Sure. So you're speaking my language now Uh-oh. because I love children learning in the summer and being engaged in learning. So you're absolutely right. Depending on what the family situation is, you know, maybe mom and dad are both having to work and grandparents are keeping the children or a neighbor or someone else. Maybe they don't have the resources to get their children involved in summer camps or even come to the public library for summer reading. And so their children are sitting at home, sometimes in front of devices sometimes in front of the television. And so if you're not continuing to read and learn and experience new things over the summer, you actually can begin to lose some of the skill that you gained in the school year. And so that's critically important for all of us to know and to understand. And our library takes that very seriously. And so for many, many years, we've offered summer reading programming um, and we want it. There's no charge if you come it's free at all of our library locations Where, so, so, so what does that programming look like so children come to the library um, weekly for a program and we have regular um story programming where we share stories. We talk about what they're reading. They get a reading log. They track the reading that they are doing this summer. We have special presenters that come in, uh, depending on the theme. Mm-hmm. Each summer, there's a different statewide summer reading theme. And What um, was last year's theme? So last year's theme was camping, sort of a camping oh, um, yes. and that sort of thing. So, camp kindness. Yes. Camp kindness. Camp kindness. Yes. So this year is a uh, fine adventure at your library. That's right. Okay. So there's a different um, theme every week that fits in with going 
going on an adventure. That's yeah. right. But Scott, we know that some children um, have special learning um, differences. Um, and so our um, library has put some concerted effort, thanks to Megan, um, to do a program that will help children who maybe have learning differences, such as, such as dyslexia or ADD, um, to feel um, a part of the summer learning and to feel excited about yeah, that. Absolutely. So my son Eli is 13 and he has struggled mightily with dyslexia. Um, and through that experience and sitting in um, at meetings with various partners, we have um, really seen a need in this community to not only support those children, but to also kind of change the narrative. Um, so the idea is that, you know, children with ADHD, maybe auditory processing disorder, dyslexia, they have average to above average um, IQs. They're very smart children. They just have differences. They're different. Um, my son struggles with reading, but by the age of eight, he had his own little small business um, and was donating money to United Way and Partnership for Children and places like that. Um, he can pro out problem solve all of us. He will be fine. Um, so the idea is that we look at it through an asset based lens. Again, that's another economic. Um, driver there. You know, these are your entrepreneurs. You know, Richard Branson has dyslexia. Sure. He's doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, it's less I heard. I think he's he's pretty good. Yeah, he's he fine. owns an island. Yeah, he'll be so fine. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. Walt Disney was dyslexic. Yeah. You know, again, he did all right for himself. That's heard an that advantage. I mean, the, the, I, I think something that needs to be said about entrepreneurship is part of what makes you great is that you're different. You know, if you're not different, if you're just like everybody else, then you're not producing anything that's going to be meaningful. So I think it needs to be pointed out that you're, um, and David Rendell, uh, do you, you guys know David probably? He's a speaker locally, but he talks about this. He talks about how like, you know, the weird part about you and all of us have a weird, all of us are weird in our own ways. In many ways, that's your superpower. That's your superpower. Exactly. That's the thing that delivers something the world would otherwise not get if you didn't exist in it. And so I love what you're saying. I think it's just meaningful. It, not just does it value the these kids and the individuals, but it points out, hey, this is this is how you win. This is not what's keeping you from winning. This is how you get there. And so Scott, let me brag on Megan a little okay, bit. Okay. Do that, so please. she came in many times and just lamenting and saying, you know, my husband and I, we both have degrees, but navigating this is so difficult. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing. And at times, Megan will tell you, she was in tears. Yeah. And so we were just, you know, friend to friend talking, coworker to co coworker. And I said, so what are you going to do about this? And let me tell you, she did something about mm -hmm. this. And not only for Eli, but for all of the children in our community yeah. who have learning differences, she has changed the trajectory. Yeah. Um, the way people look at them, think about them. Um, I am so incredibly proud of her yeah. work. Absolutely. So we have lots of supports in place now at the library. We're partnering with the school system. Um, we have a resource center at the library, where, at the Goldsboro Library, where anybody that's a card holder can come check out um, Books. Anna alluded to it earlier mm -hmm. when she talked about books that will read out loud to you. We have um, smart pens that will dictate, you know, they'll record what the teacher says and then turn it into like a Google um, Doc, things like that. And some of those pens can cost a significant amount of money and it's not a one size fits all solution. And so, um, you know, if you're trying to really make sure that you're targeting the best interventions for your child. Being able to have access to all those items is really key. Um, additionally, we've had the Hill Center out of Durham come do trainings. Um, Beth Sailors, who is, an, you know, local, she has done trainings for the community. Um, my son's bus driver comes to every single one of them because she sees herself as part of the village. So the idea is that we're bringing back the village for these children. And these same interventions actually show to work for all children. Um, and then the summer, we'll do some referral-based tutoring, which could, if not grant-funded, would be, you know, $100 an hour is what you would typically pay as a parent for those kinds of interventions, um, which is cost prohibitive. And so we have grant funding that will cover that for around 48 children this summer. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's just cool, right? And. How blessed are we to live in Wayne County where partnership is the name of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So we knew our um, 
auditorium was not going to be available at the library this summer because summer reading and all the other things we need to have take place there. And so we're partnering with First Christian Church in Goldsboro, and they have said, oh, this is important work, and we want to be a part of this. So they actually have renovated a whole suite of Sunday school rooms for us. We were there this morning looking at it, new carpeting, new AC, uh, new painting, whole nine yards, just to make sure children in Wayne County have these learning supports. Yeah. That is so, so good. And so, I, you know, my takeaway and my brain is going in all different directions, but uh, what I, I'm, if I were to boil it down, what I hear you saying is that no matter, no matter who you are, this is available to you. Right. Like this is accessible. Right. Knowledge is accessible versus not you know, a step has been created. If the step was too far, you just put another step in between to make it easier for yeah. people to, or even possible for people, exactly. right? Families exactly. like, like yours, families mm-hmm. like yours to be able yeah. to take advantage of these, to take advantage of these. How will we know if the, I don't, I don't, even, I don't know if you'll know even how this would be measured, but how would we know if, if the learning loss has been slowed in the county over time? Like, is there a way for us to Well, of course, when children arrive back at school, they do their uh, intake on their students coming in and they'll um, do do like star reading exams. Um, Of course, you'd have your end of grade um, reading proficiency scores, things like that. But for the tutoring piece, it'll be very easy for us to show outcomes because we can actually do a um, very short, it's not as intimidating as it sounds, pre-test and then post-test for the students. And that will show, that should show growth. And I guess for, for workforce, you know, when I think, um, you know, going back to not just entrepreneurship, but, uh, maybe readiness, um, if people are closer to grade level, as they continue to matriculate up, you know, each year, each year, less loss, more on par, more ready, then, you know, our schools improve, uh, our quality of life, even as a, as a measure for, People like Seymour Johnson Air Force Base or for, um, you know, the economic development people who are trying to recruit industry into our community. So there's that side of it just as, hey, if the, if the school grades improve because more kids are on par, there's that. But then it's the, the kids are more ready for the jobs that are needed in the future, right? So the future workforce is going to be more ready as a result of less learning loss and, and more families and more kids being able to access resources that they absolutely have the skills and the intelligence and the capability to have and know and, and, and consume, they just access, right? And, and access through a channel by which makes sense. Is that fair? Is that a fair way to look at it from maybe an economic and community standpoint? It is. Scott, a lot of times when people think about the public library, they think about things that take place inside the walls of our library locations, our library facilities. Mm -hmm. But our library is so deeply embedded in this community. So we take the library to the people, right? (laughs) right? And we we go and meet them where they are. So you might find us in a school or in a public housing community or, um, at the community college or really anywhere. This morning we were meeting with the new director over at the Boys and Girls Club and just, you know, wanting to wrap our arms around those young people that are at the Boys and Girls Club and make them um, the beneficiaries of um, some grant funds that we are going to apply for so that we can put a mini learning studio at the Boys and Girls Club because we want all of the children in Wayne County to succeed and they're a part of those children. That's awesome. So uh, we've got a big week coming up, I understand, April 7th through the 13th. National Library Week. National Library Week. Did you know there was such a thing? I didn't. Okay. Until you. <laughs> until right. you. But thankfully <laughs> for me, I have you in my life, you know? Okay. Um, which, by the way, before I ask this question, I do think it's important for us to say uh, and acknowledge, you know, I've lived in different places and, well, Wayne County does from a library standpoint and, and how you are, like what you just said about being immersed in the community. That is so true. And I didn't even think I, it, it, it didn't even dawn on me until I lived in Wayne County, until I met you, until I started to discover what you do. And even more so now the role I'm in, how much is being done in so many different directions. And so I do think that there, I do think the community should know and appreciate and understand that what's happening in Wayne County through our public library is unique. 
I think it's yeah. unique. And, and I think I would, I would put it against anybody's. I mean, I think it is a competitive advantage for us that we have you all doing what you're doing. Uh, the creativity, the ingenuity, um, the diversity of thought and pattern of approach. I just, I think it's awesome. So thank you. Huge shout out to you before we talk about this next. Thank you. I'm honored to lead such a a dynamo staff. I mean, they are so incredible. All the words you just used to describe them are true for all of our staff. Nothing happens with one person in that place. We all wrap our hands around this community. Um, They are such dedicated people. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to honor them in that way. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, we, uh, you know, I wish we, we could sit here for a long time and talk about all the different things because I, I really, I encourage people to just engage, you know, go take a visit, just have a conversation, explore, just find out what the library does, not just in Goldsboro, but all over the county. Uh, because I do think people would be like, wow, just blown away. So thank you all for what you do. So April 7th to the 13th, big, 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 big week, National Library Week. Um, so a lot to celebrate. Uh, and I think you have some news yes, that you yes, are yes. going to share. After a long wait, we finally are going to be ready to open the Northern Wayne Library. Oh, it's man. located in Fremont. Yes. And this has been a passion project for all of us. Yay. Um, I wish I had confetti. <laughs> we'll have confetti that day. This will have to serve us. <laughs> so we'll, we're moving from the Pikeville Library location over to Fremont to a larger building. So this is the former Dollar General store that yes. has been completely renovated. Uh, furnishings are going in, bookshelvings being right installed. Right on 117, Highway yes, 117. Yes, yes. And um, so on April the First, we'll do a soft launch so people can come and just see their new library. But on April the 10th, we'll actually have our ribbon cutting. So the Board of Commissioners invites everyone to come out and be a part of that celebration. We'll have our state librarian here, and it's going to be a really exciting time. Um, We're moving from a much smaller space um, to a building that's a, a around a little over 8,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And so what that means for community members is that now all of a sudden, in addition to having access to all of our books and resources in the library, we actually have space for public programming. And that is a big deal. That's a big deal. But we're... We have some other things we're launching around that same time. Yes. So we'll actually be launching our mobile library. Um, We have waited patiently for that vehicle. And this is more than just a bookmobile. So our last bookmobile was about 30 years ago. Um, They just kind of went away, you know, as far as best practices for libraries. And now they're back, but they're back in in a different way. Um, It's not, again, more than books. It's not just books. It literally says hashtag more than books on the side of it. You're welcome. (laughs) You're welcome. We'll we'll give you your um, royal. Two fees later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. It will have a mobile, um, you know, have Wi Fi on it. It'll have the hotspot. It will have books. It can have pieces from the learning studio on it, um, environmental education collections, things like that. It's really going to be much more um, adapt- adaptable. Uh, Apparently I can't spell that word about <laughs> to anywhere that we're going. So for mm-hmm. example, if we're going to go to the cliffs, which we have planned to do, we've worked with them, um, we might do environmental education. Um, if we're going to, let's say, an area where we're going to be serving opportunity youth, it might be career resources. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different things we can do, but it has an awning, so we can do story times there. We can mm-hmm. go, um, we're going to really go out to like the Dudley community, Seven Springs, Grantham, some of our more rural Underserved, areas. Underserved, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're underserved and might have um, be more of like an information desert as far as, you know, lower internet speeds, um, you know, since this data is showing fewer devices out there. That's right. We can kind of help, again, fill that gap in services. Yeah, because I would assume that that learning loss, you know, I think sometimes people's minds uh, think one thing when they think learning loss. But the truth of the matter is the farther away people are from resources, the more likely that loss is going to happen and occur. So really, the more rural the community, the more likely the loss. Exactly. One could one could yeah, extrapolate. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So these mobile, yeah. what a cool move. Mm-hmm. We can roll up anywhere. You can. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got, that sounds like a video. You know what I mean? That's going to be rolling up, son. I love that. Well, 
bravo, first of all. Bravo. What a great announcement. Uh, thank you for what you're doing uh, throughout. And uh, I know that we'll get to see those things and uh, be a part. I know the Chamber's looking forward to being part of your ribbon cutting there in in uh, Northern Wayne and Fremont. I live in Fremont now, I so know, you I know, know. I'm, I'm fired up. So is there going to be cake? I think that's an important question. Yes, there there's, will be cake. There's going to be there's cake. There's going to be cake. <laughs> so even if you weren't sure about books to start with, you should definitely come for cake. And then you'll be blown away, I think, by what you see and the opportunities. Well, we love you all. We love what you do in the world. And thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing um, about your work and what you're doing. And thank you for going into this work. Uh, it has impact and it's changing lives. And so thank you for thank you for that. Thank you, Scott. It's our pleasure. Yeah.